This is an interesting little clock by Joseph Nibb. It was made shortly after he left Oxford and came down to take over Samuel Nibb's workshop in London. And to me, it's a bit of an enigma for two reasons. The first reason is that it's a full grand sonnery clock. There appears to be only two clocks made by Fromentiel, uh, full grand sonnery, which appear before this one. And so this is quite a departure from Joseph Nibb's previous production, which tended only to be weight-driven clocks in Oxford. He comes down, takes over Samuel's workshop, produces a few clocks, which I think were in, in production in the workshop, and then appears to have made this clock here. The second reason why it's an enigma to me is that it abandons the principle of using a fusee to keep an equal drive onto the pendulum. Huygens tried to get over the unequal drive by having cycloidal cheeks, but the drive from a spring can vary by a factor of four or five to one. Uh, when it's fully wound, it gives uh, four or five times the power than it does when it's almost run out. And so that this clock doesn't have a fusee and it doesn't um, have cycloidal cheeks on the going train. So it's a bit of an enigma. And what's even worse, the same spring which drives the uh, going train also drives the quarter train. So it's an absolute nightmare. If you let it run down, the, the spring has enough energy to keep the pendulum swinging, but not to start the quarters properly. And so that the clock keeps going and gets completely out of phase, uh, and then it's about a three-hour job to get it back into phase again.